So the val, the tongue is in the same, making contact at the same point of the mouth, which is in fact just uh, beneath the upper teeth, and it's got a sort of sandwich beneath the upper teeth and the lower lip in both letters. So val, val, but in the va, va, that's, that contact is, uh, there's more pressure in that contact and the back of the tongue is raised. All right, so we're coming back now to the final letter in this series, which was the uh, the vod. All right, now this is um, a notoriously difficult letter to get right. Firstly, the first problem is that there's no non-emphatic equivalent of this letter. Um, and secondly, the Arabs sort of pride themselves in this letter being unique to the Arabic alphabet. So um, you won't hear it in any, other, in, in any other language. The way to pronounce it is that the tongue um, is in contact with the molars, either with the molars and the premolars, either on the right hand side of the mouth or the left hand side of the mouth, and uh, it, whichever is easier. For me, the left hand side is easier. So um, uh, that 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 contact, the pressure that results from that contact, that that that's what makes the sound. So the so it's a lod, lod sound. It's, so th it's an asymmetrical sound in the mouth. Okay, the the tongue isn't. Um, in contact with the mouth equivalent uh, on, on both the right and the left hand side which is rather it's drifting either to the right uh, either to the right or to the left and it's not an easy sound to get right it does require some practice okay the lod um, as a first approximation I should say and you, you will see this in some modern textbooks it's sometimes referred to as an emphatic dal sound and that's not entirely accurate that's not entirely accurate but it is a good first first approximation Okay, then we have uh, the ain, the ain. Again, no equivalent in English, and again, not an easy sound to get right. Um, if you think back to the ha, we said that it's produced by uh, the muscles which are used in swallowing tensing up and constricting the throat. And this this is also happening in this letter, the ain, except it's happening much more so. They, they constrict even more. And whereas the ha was voiceless, this is voiced. Voiceless and voiced just means that uh, the, the vocal cords are vibrating if it's voiced and they're not if it's voiceless. So for the ain, the ain, it's a voiced sound with the vocal cords, with, with the uh, muscles that we use for swallowing, tightening and constricting the throat, and we get this ain sound, almost like strangling uh, sort of sound, in words like ilm, ilm, for example, which means uh, knowledge, or amel, which means uh, action. Okay, then we have the rain, rain. This is a gargled sound, as you can hear, and it's uh, used in French, some, uh, it's, it's similar to the R in French, in words like restaurant, restaurant, okay, it's the same gargling uh, sound which is made. Okay, then we have uh, the fa, very, very easy, it's just the English F, in words like fat, then qaf. Now qaf, um, in words like Quran, for example, most famously, is a click, it's a clicking sound, it's produced by the back of the tongue and the further, uh, the, the rearmost part, of the mouth, the closest to the uvula, so you get a sound. That's the qaf. That's the qaf. It's not to be confused with the next letter in the alphabet. It shouldn't be confused with it, which is the gaf. Okay, the gaf. Now the gaf is just like our English k. It's just like our English k in words like kick, for example. For example. Okay, then we have um, a very easy home run. We have the lam, which is the English l for light. We have the mim, which is the English m for mad. Uh, noon, which is the English N for night. We have ha, and this is the English H. Okay, this is the English H. Remember, not the ha, sorry, not the ha, which we had earlier, uh, but rather this letter here, the ha. This is the English H, um, it was like hello and hi. Then we have wow, which is uh, the English W for wing, for example, and ya, which is the English Y, uh, for example, it was like yes. So let's go back and look at letters which sound similar but um, are actually different. So to a non-Arab ear, they can sound very similar, and we're just going to try and understand the difference in the way they're pronounced. So the first group, we have the da and the ba, and we mentioned that the ba is the emphatic version of the da, so they're, they're completely different letters. So da, for example, in words like takabur, meaning pride, and ba in words like tib, meaning medicine, or thur, which means mountain. Then we have the tha and the val. Okay, now tha and val are both in English represented by the combination th. But we mentioned that this th is used in two different ways in English. One is uh, voiceless, which is the tha, tha, and one is voiced, which is the val, val. And you can hear when you're making the voiced val, you can hear the vibration um, of, the vo of the vocal cords. Okay, then we have the tha, the scene, and the sod. 
Um, and now in Urdu again, all of these letters are uh, pronounced as an as an S is in English, um, but in Arabic they're very different. So the tha, as we've mentioned a few times now, is the th in thin, thin, it's a lispy sort of sound. The seen is the English S, and the sad is an emphatic seen. So where, where, whereas the seen is quite light, the sad sad is a much heavier sound. All right, then we have the ha and the ha. All right, ha and ha. You can hear they're very similar. Um, but uh, they, they shouldn't be pronounced in the same way. So the ha is pronounced, as we mentioned, by the uh, throat muscles constricting, so the throat constricting uh, the uh, larynx as it were narrowing, and so the air rushing out much quicker, and you get a ha sound, as in a ha in English perhaps, uh, whereas the ha is like a standard English H for hello. Then we have um, uh, four letters in the, in the next series, which is the val, the zai, the wad and the and the va, va. Now um, in Urdu again, this is the, the the reason I'm covering this here is because in Urdu, all of these letters are pronounced as an English Z, but that's only the zai. Properly, only the zai should be pronounced like the English Z, and the others are very different. So the val, as we've now mentioned a few times, is um, the English, the voiced English th. So it's a buzzing sound um, uh, produced in words like this and that. So val. All right. Then we have the uh, the dad, the dad, which was um, remember the difficult letter to get right. So it's produced by the side of the tongue, and the molars on the left or the right hand side of the mouth. So you get a, and for me the left hand side is slightly easier. So you get a dad, dad sound. Uh, and then finally the the va, which was an emphatic version of the, right? And uh, finally you have a, a qaf and kaf, qaf and kaf. So again you can hear the similarity, but they shouldn't both be pronounced like the English K. That's only the Qaf, the second of the two. The first one, the Qaf, is a clicking sound. Qaf, in words like Qur'an. Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kha, Dal, Dal, Ra, Zai, Sin, Sheen, Saad, Dad, Ta, Dha, Ain, Rain, Fa, Qaf, Kaf, Lam, Mim, Noon, Ha, Wow, Ya. There are also three other letters in the Arabic um, script which aren't included in the alphabet. So we're just going to look at what those three letters are and perhaps mention one or two reasons for why they're not included. Firstly, we have the Hamza. Okay, now this is uh, the glottal stop, and we don't have an equivalent letter in English, but we do make this sound all of the time. Um, and it's made by the glottis completely closing, so what happens is that the airstream is completely stopped, completely cut, and then s uh, there's a sudden release and the airstream resumes. So for example, in English words which begin with a vowel, such as in and up and apple, okay, if you pay attention to what's happening in these words, you'll hear that just before we uh, utter these words, just before we, we make these uh, pronouncements, uh, the airstream is completely stopped and then suddenly the glottis relaxes and the airstream resumes. So we have in and up and apple. Okay, now it's perhaps um, easier to hear in the middle of a word, and here you do hear it in the middle of a word in certain English dialects, such as Cockney. Um, so for example, the T in words like better is sometimes replaced in those dialects with a glottal stop, so you'd hear better, better. Right, you can hear that temporary and very um, a, a sudden cut of the airstream. So you get ba ah, and in, uh, also where, where the t occurs in the middle of a phrase like what if, what if, and shut up, shut up. Right, so that that sudden pause. That's 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 the, the glottal stop. Now in Arabic, uh, we have a formal letter for this, which is the hamza. So we, when we want to make the sound in Arabic, we we use the hamza. The reason it's not included is for various historical reasons. Some of the pre-Islamic Arab tribes didn't have this letter um, and didn't make this sound. So it's not included in the Arab, Arabic alphabet, but, but in fact it's, it can be considered the 29th letter and sometimes when you hear an Arab recite the alphabet he'll um, include Hamza at the end. Now there's a couple of interesting things to note about the Hamza at this stage. We're, we're going to deal with it in more detail in um, uh, the fourth chapter of the book, which, which will be lesson four. But, but a couple of interesting things to note at this point. Firstly, uh, where, where it occurs at the beginning of a word, okay, it's always written either above or beneath an alif. It, it sort of sits on that alif. Now, although it's always...